This video is a quick introduction to APIs, or Application Programming Interfaces. If you're interested in getting some more information, I recommend Hank Preston's video series, Network Programming Basics. You'll find it at Cisco NetDev. An API is a way for two pieces of software to talk with each other, like a middleman that helps to send and receive information. With APIs, someone else has already done all of the hard programming, you just need to know the API calls to get the information. We are using APIs all the time. Every time we're searching for restaurants on Yelp, getting directions on Google Maps, or watching videos on YouTube, following a Twitter feed, or generating random quotes for our emails, or looking at satellite-generated images of space. This image is an example of the astronomy picture of the day from NASA. NASA has its own API that you can call to get an astronomy picture every day. The importance of APIs. APIs are very important in programmable software-defined networks. APIs are changing the traditional approach to the user interface. And APIs are used to communicate between services, network devices, and monitoring and management software. Popular APIs are SOAP, which is a mature API standard designed by Microsoft and used to build internet web services. It uses HTTP and XML. REST, which is an API framework that's simpler and more flexible to use than SOAP. It uses HTTP and supports JSON along with XML. NetConf which was designed to replace SNMP as a programmatic interface between management programs and network devices. It uses SSH and XML. And RESTConf, which is built off of REST and is a REST-like API interface to the network. It supports XML and JSON, defines transport and communication, and is coupled to Yang for data, like NetConf. Let's take a look at an API in action. If you're interested in getting the astronomy picture of the day, you can go to nasa.gov and search for APOD. Here you can see on the Getting Started page, it tells you exactly what to do. You're going to need an API key, but you can also use their demo key. And it basically shows you the step-by-step -step process for getting it started. This was yesterday's image. To execute an API call, you can use a browser. In Firefox here, I have an example of using the nasa.gov API, and I've put in my API call right into the URL. That's because this API framework uses REST, or representational state transfer, which uses HTTP requests. And this is an example of a GET request. It uses the REST API to get information from nasa.gov regarding APOD, or the astronomy picture of the day. You can see that the API key is just the demo key that anybody can use. This returns all of this information related to the astronomy picture of the day. You can also use Postman. Here in Postman, I'm using REST once again. You can see here there's the GET request. Here is the URL. You can see there's other choices besides get. You could use post, put, delete if you're requesting data or uploading data or sending data. You can see here there goes the API key, the demo key, and this is what was returned. Now, if you want to use an API, the REST API framework, into a program, you can see in this example, I'm using the web browser to write and execute code right from the browser. On the left-hand side, I've created a HTML page with JavaScript. My GET request, you can see right here, and this is the API being used. This is the JavaScript that's going to request the picture of the day from nasa.gov. All I have to do is click this button to run my code, and the results will show up in the browser on the right. So let's click Run. And here's the new image of the day, the Elephant's Trunk Nebula in Cepheus.